the youth guaranteed agreed at EU level in July 2013 commits you and others to ensure that all young people under the age of 15 years receive a good quality offer of employment, continued education and apprenticeship or a traineeship within the period of four months of becoming unemployed or leaving formal education. The youth guarantee should be about real employment of quality training and education. Job bridge in its current form, as I said, is not that. Four courts assistants, waitresses, housekeeping, car valeting and food operatives, telesales assistants. These are some of the sorts of offers advertised on Job Bridge website at the moment. It does not take 40 hours a week for nine months or even 18 months to learn how to clean a car, change a bed, carry plates or flip a burger minister. It does not. All of these jobs are relatively quick to learn and they include hard work, work which should be paid for and people are willing to pay for. And these internships are depressing the real job creation. Because why create a job and pay an employee when you can get somebody for nothing from the Department of Social Protection? Let them and let the people pay the expense of providing work for your company. Because since this government took up office, there are 18,000 fewer young people employed in the economy. Over roughly the same period, there have been 22,000 job bridge internships. The influence of job bridge on pay rates across the economy should not be underestimated because job bridge introduces a new minimum wage of €3.75 Euro an hour, your €100 Euro dole and a €50 Euro top hit. You've been fond of quoting to me and other deputies in this House the Indicon report. I went back over it again and I, I had missed some of the quotes in it, but you, kind of, you might be interested in some of the figures. Because you failed to mention that the Indicon report said, the figures indicate that average hourly earnings among job bridge participants who have secured employment following their placements are persistently equivalent to around 56% of the average level of the hourly earnings across the economy as a whole. They're not getting the top jobs. They're not getting the top rates. Yet these are people kind of who have the skills, who have the qualifications, and who have the experience often even before they've taken up the internships. Most job bridge in, uh, participants have both qualification and experience. Here's another Indicon figure that you haven't highlighted in the media. 29% is the number of host companies who when surveyed said in the absence of job bridge they would have offered paid employment to interns. Six, this is a quote, 6.5% of hosts stated that they would have been highly likely to have offered paid employment to job bridge interns in the absence of the scheme, while 22.5% indicated that they would have been fairly likely. That's proof that at that you are providing free labour. And maybe your party's name could be changed to that. But that's just the level of displacement that you're admitting to. Because this government kind of has also used the internship, the job bridge scheme, kind of to provide labour in different departments in this state and also in local authorities. And you've given me the figures lately, so don't shake your head. These are free labour to the government and the government department at no prospect of any job. Free labour with no prospect. Any type of internship shall have a prospect of a job at the end of it. There is a public service embargo, Minister, just in case you haven't noticed, you haven't read up on the notes that you're given when you join the Cabinet. Kind of, and you have no, done nothing to lift that. Kind of, yeah, these people are expected to work for nothing, for the Department, and uh, 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 at a cost to themselves. Kind of, Minister, you are shameful in, in relation to your protection of job bridge. This Government in particular applauds itself repeatedly for restoring the one euro to the minimum wage that was cut by Fianna Fáil. And I applauded you at the time as well. But this government's ultimate legacy will be the transformation of this country into a minimum wage economy where, which has insecurity and poverty rates uh, and poverty wages been rife. 
one in which you will be expected to work the probationary period of nine months of any new job you seek for free. The long-term negative impact of this government's approach to our young people and workers, very basic rights and wages will be lasting in significance. They should not be underestimated and ignored. And neither should kind of the hundreds of thousands of people who have emigrated, many, many of those who are young people who will probably never return to our shores kind of to take up employment. Many, many of them who, 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 who have lost hope in our economy. They are people that this state has invested in, that we as a, an economy should be uh, bearing the fruits of that investment rather than some other economy abroad benefiting from our, our investment. One of the deputies earlier said kind of that he, he, he found it strange that we should be encouraging people to take up jobs. I uh, our internships or uh, activation. I have no hesitation in encouraging any young people to take up job offers, kind of activation and training schemes, but I have a major problem kind of encouraging anyone to take up a scheme which advocates free labour to companies who are making millions in this country. And millions, and they're multinationals who are benefiting from this. And I also say it's a shame, Minister, that given the fact that there's so much uh, government and of our money being invested in job bridge and those type of schemes is that you won't even publish the list of the companies who are benefiting from our investment. You will also not even publish the list, the 32 companies which are blacklisted, Minister, those who have abused and who have been found by your department to abuse that system. So shame on you, Minister, and shame on your government for not delivering properly for young people who are unemployed. Thank shame you. on you for forcing young people to emigrate. And I wish kind of, that you would, at, even at this late stage, rethink your amendment to our motion and support the motion, kind of, which is a logical step for anybody who believes that they're on the less left to take to support young people who are unemployed. Thank so, you. Back in your box. I now must put the, I now must put the question on amendment number. I now put the question on amendment number one in the name of the Minister for Social Protection. The question is that the amendment be made. The Chakti Atah, hey, the Tarish Kid Abadis Ta. The Chakti Atah, and the Quinn Abadis Neil. She didn't go in and catch stretching.